an integrated method of learning interactive method of learning and you are going to learn all the current trends so today we are going to discuss a practical approach to hemoptysis so for more such classes you can subscribe to dams ultimate life course and you can use this promo code uh, you can use this code referral code so to avail 10% discount on the course so let other students also join we'll start in a couple of minutes So this is a very very important topic because majority of patients with hemoptysis might reach to the emergency department so they might be in panic you as a intern or as a first year resident you must be knowing whether to consider this as a dangerous symptom or you can consider it as a not so dangerous symptom how to evaluate further and what to do next so very very important symptom hemoptysis so let us start our discussion first of all what is meant by hemoptysis so in simple words it is the blood in sputum if a patient is expectorating if he is coughing out blood this phenomena is called as hemoptysis coughing out blood is called as hemoptysis now let us see some basics regarding hemoptysis before that in a normal individual you must be knowing your lung has dual blood supply so lung is supplied by two blood vessels so one is a high pressure a high pressure systemic circulation high pressure systemic circulation that is bronchial artery so one source is a high pressure systemic circulation that is bronchial artery and other source of blood to my lungs is a low pressure system that is a low pressure pulmonary circulation and what is the artery here it is pulmonary artery in a normal individual lung is getting dual blood supply so one supply is a high pressure systemic circulation and other is low pressure pulmonary circulation let us see some one liners related to hemoptysis so the first question that you need to know the answer is most common source of hemoptysis and most common source of massive hemoptysis now there is a high pressure circulation and a low pressure circulation which can rupture easily usually high pressure circulation that is bronchial artery so the most common source of hemoptysis because of the nature of circulation high pressure circulation answer is bronchial artery most common source of hemoptysis will be bronchial artery then what is most common source of massive hemoptysis so whenever a high pressure circulation ruptures because it is rupturing at very high pressure it will be difficult to control the flow so the loss of blood will also be more see whenever a vessel with very high pressure a vessel with very low pressure ruptures when will the blood loss be more 
So when it ruptures at high pressure, it will be difficult to control. The blood loss will also be more. So the answer for most common source of hemoptysis and most common source of massive hemoptysis, it is bronchial artery. Now, what is the definition of massive hemoptysis? So when can you call this phenomena as a massive hemoptysis? So write down this definition from 20th edition Harrison. So it is expectoration of more than 150. So more than 100 to 150 ml of blood. More than 100 to 150 ml of blood per episode. So more than 100 to 150 ml of blood per episode or more than 400 to 600 ml of blood if a patient is expectorating per 24 hours. So these are the various definitions of massive hemoptysis. So to call it as massive hemoptysis, if in a single episode patient expectorates about 100 to 150 ml of blood or throughout the day when you have measured so, and throughout the day when you have measured if it was 400 to 600 ml of blood per 24 hours then we can call it as massive hemoptysis then other questions what is the most common cause what is the most common cause of hemoptysis in india so in india it should be the single answer so what is the most common cause of hemoptysis in india our national disease that is tuberculosis then what is the most common cause of hemoptysis worldwide so previously it was thought as malignancy and later they thought it was as chronic bronchitis now they have realized worldwide also the answer is tb the simplest reason we indians are worldwide it will be our pride to share our national disease so most common cause of hemoptysis in india is tuberculosis most common cause of hemoptysis in worldwide also now it is tuberculosis then if they ask you what is most common cause of massive hemoptysis recent studies have shown that most common cause of massive hemoptysis was found to be bronchiectasis so they have found out most common cause of massive hemoptysis is bronchiectasis then what is the most common cause of death in massive hemoptysis so this is another concept that you should know so why will a patient with massive hemoptysis usually die so it is not due to volume loss so before volume loss shock can happen something will happen that will kill the patient so whenever there is massive hemoptysis there is huge amount of blood in your lungs so the blood can reach your trachea so whenever blood is out of blood vessels what is its tendency to form a clot see if at all somebody tightly holds your neck so for how much time you can survive not more than five minutes see for blood loss to happen shock to develop it will take some time so but if there is obstruction by blood clot in trachea patient can die very soon so most common cause of death in massive hemoptysis is asphyxiation is asphyxiation with blood clot most common cause of death in hemoptysis is asphyxiation with blood clot then if they ask you what is most important in management of massive hemoptysis now whenever there is an emergency definitely airway breathing circulation are important now in massive hemoptysis out of this what is most important is it airway or circulation see definitely both are important 
but if they ask you to choose single option you should make sure patient's airway is free from secretions so airway maintenance airway maintenance so most important in management of massive hemoptysis is airway maintenance so in the topic hemoptysis there are lot of controversies see everything has been solved here with authenticity so most common source of hemoptysis is bronchial artery massive hemoptysis bronchial artery cause in india tb old white tb for massive hemoptysis it is bronchiectasis most common cause of death in massive hemoptysis asphyxiation with blood clot most important in management of massive hemoptysis your answer should be airway maintenance it should be airway maintenance now coming to etiology of hemoptysis see what are all the diseases that can cause hemoptysis see before going into the group of diseases whenever a patient reaches to you with hemoptysis his clinical history is very very important so you should ask him what are all the other symptoms he is having whether he is having any shortness of breath whether he is having any chest pain whether he is having any orthopnea whether he is having any fever so because if you can inquire about other symptoms it will give you idea about diagnosis see hemoptysis with fever generally it can be infective manifestation so hemoptysis with orthopnea so generally it can be due to some cardiac cause hemoptysis severe chest pain one can think there can be possibility of of pulmonary thromboembolism in the same way hemoptysis with some joint pains hemoptysis with some malar skin rash hemoptysis with some hematuria so one can think about autoimmune diseases or connective tissue disorders see that's why whenever a patient is coming with hemoptysis don't just see the patient is having only hemoptysis inquire about other symptoms see if you can associate with other symptoms then you can easily come to a diagnosis see medicine is about integration and association just thinking about hemoptysis writing 10 or 20 differential diagnosis is not practicing medicine it is not practicing medicine it is just mugging up medicine practicing medicine is see the clinical scenario so along with hemoptysis this fellow is having fever so most probably think of an infection along with hemoptysis this patient might be having some orthopnea so think about any cardiac involvement along with hemoptysis patient is complaining of severe chest pain so think any possibility of pulmonary thromboembolism along with hemoptysis patient is complaining of some joint pain rash on the face some hematuria blood in the urine so you can think about some autoimmune diseases or connective tissue disorders so chronic smoker hemoptysis there is some weight loss so now in your mind what should be the differential diagnosis malignancy so medicine is all about integration and association that's why don't just see hemoptysis as a single symptom know the clinical history also so the etiology of hemoptysis can be classified into so first is an infective etiology any infection in the lung can result in hemoptysis so infections can be due to mycobacterium tuberculosis other bacterial infections viral infections fungal infections so infective manifestations such as bronchiectasis bronchitis all this can result in hemoptysis next group neoplastic so it can be either primary tumors of lung primary tumors of lung can cause hemoptysis or metastasis into the lung 
secondary metastasis into the lung can also cause hemoptysis. So majority of the causes lies in these two groups. So majority of the causes of hemoptysis. So majority of the causes of hemoptysis usually we have to search between infective and neoplastic. Apart from this, there are also cardiac and vascular causes. So cardiac causes such as mitral stenosis, pulmonary edema, cardiac failure, pulmonary embolism, and some abnormal connections in the lung, pulmonary arteriovenous malformations. So this can rupture, arteriovenous malformations. So cardiac and vascular causes are this. Coming to systemic causes, some systemic diseases can also manifest as hemoptysis such as coagulopathies, small vessel vasculitis. I think you must be knowing there are small vessel vasculitis such as Wigner's granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis, Churg-Strauss syndrome. In all this, minute pulmonary vessels are involved. So they can rupture resulting in hemoptysis. Then good pasture syndrome presenting with hemoptysis and hematuria. Good pasture syndrome. And connective tissue disorder related lung diseases. These can also later on lead to hemoptysis. So CTD in the sense connective tissue disorders. So examples of connective tissue disorders that you know SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma. So in all this as a rare complication there can be alveolar hemorrhage. Systemic causes such as coagulopathy, small vessel vasculitis, good pasture syndrome, connective tissue disorder related lung disease and finally some traumatic causes so direct injury to the chest penetrating injury or blunt injury chest can also cause hemoptysis whereas all this form minority causes of hemoptysis. So these are all not that common see whenever there is hemoptysis no need to look for all this. So if there is some relevant clinical history, then you can look at this. So majority of hemoptysis generally belongs to infective and neoplastic etiology. Minority, cardiac, vascular, systemic, traumatic. Now coming to evaluation. So how do you evaluate this infective and neoplastic causes? So for this, generally we do some basic investigations, complete blood count, a chest x-ray, sputum examination to look for any organism, to look for any malignant cells, then CT chest and ultimately FOB. So flexible bronchoscope also called as fiber optic bronchoscope. How it is done? The evaluation order I will tell you in the next slide. So just know in majority of cases for evaluating hemoptysis these are the routine investigations. Complete blood count, chest x-ray, sputum examination, CT chest, and if required fiber optic bronchoscopy whereas for these causes for these rare causes what are all the things required for evaluation 
so if you suspect cardiovascular or systemic causes you may need to advise an ecg you may need to advise a 2d echo if you feel it is pulmonary thromboembolism d dimer might be helpful and some pulmonary vascular abnormality ct pulmonary angiography if you think it is a coagulopathy you may need to do coagulation profile and next if you feel it is due to some small vessel vasculitis or connective tissue autoimmune disease related so you should go for antibody testing so specific antibody specific antibody testing for autoimmune diseases so for each and every disease for rheumatoid arthritis there is a specific antibody for sle there is a specific antibody for scleroderma for wegener's granulomatosis we are having some set of antibodies so students who have joined late so this is a demo session for the dams ultimate live course we are discussing regarding hemoptysis so already we have discussed the introduction to hemoptysis so then the etiology of hemoptysis so this discussion is a practical approach to hemoptysis so whenever you face a patient with hemoptysis you have to note down his clinical history and depending on the category he belongs if it is infective neoplastic you have to evaluate with these investigations if you feel it is cardiovascular or systemic causes you need to evaluate with these investigations okay so this is just a practical approach so tomorrow whenever you are doing your internship if somebody lands up with hemoptysis or you are a first year resident in one of the branch hemoptysis is a common complaint so these are the things that you should have in your mind is it infective is it neoplastic is it cardiovascular is it systemic or traumatic now once you have identified it as hemoptysis you can evaluate like this now there is also an algorithm of hemoptysis that we usually follow so this is a, a specialist level so suppose a patient with hemoptysis reaches me a pulmonologist so this is what i usually follow so write down algorithm of hemoptysis so that he that algorithm is usually designed to identify these majority of causes so whether it is infective or neoplastic so the algorithm of hemoptysis so whenever a patient with hemoptysis reaches me so first thing what i need to notice is it massive hemoptysis so massive means there is always risk of asphyxiation and death so i should be very careful or is it non massive hemoptysis is it massive hemoptysis or non massive hemoptysis now if it is massive hemoptysis i should assess the patient is the patient unstable or is he stable so when do you call somebody unstable when their sensorium is not good when their saturation is less when their bp is less so is this patient stable or unstable so his vitals are unstable or stable so if he is unstable i should immediately stabilize the patient and go for rigid bronchoscopy and go for rigid bronchoscopy you must be knowing bronchoscopy is of two types so one is a rigid bronchoscope and other is a flexible bronchoscope also called as fiber optic bronchoscope or fob now what is the advantage of rigid bronchoscope especially in massive hemoptysis unstable patients so this rigid bronchoscope has a big suction channel 
So what is the advantage of a bigger suction channel? It can suck out the blood clots from the trachea and save the life of the patient. So when there is a bigger suction channel, you can easily suck out the clots and save the life of the patient. Now if the patient is stable, I need to know what exactly is happening in his lung. So I go for a CT chest. Depending on that, I plan for a flexible fiber optic bronchoscopy. Now, if the patient is having non-massive hemoptysis, I can completely relax, but I should advise a chest x-ray. So, depending on the chest x-ray. So, chest x-ray, is it normal or chest x-ray, is it abnormal? So chest x-ray, is it normal or chest x-ray, is it abnormal? So what should be done next? If chest x-ray is normal, you should stratify the patients into two groups. Is this patient belonging to low risk? or is this patient belonging to high risk? See, even though most common cause of hemoptysis is tuberculosis, whenever you are evaluating in an algorithm, you should try to rule out most dangerous cause first. So what is that most dangerous cause? It is malignancy. So why I call it as most dangerous malignancy because even if I miss tuberculosis today and I identify it after few weeks, the treatment will be the same. But if I miss malignancy today and if I identify it on a later date, once it goes into metastasis, nobody can save him. So who are the patients at low risk of having malignancy? So generally non-smokers and young patients. So who are the patients at high risk of developing lung malignancy? Smokers and also increased age. Previously, the age risk factor was 60 years for malignancy. So thanks to air pollution, now the age risk factor has come down to 40 years. So tomorrow what will happen? Nobody knows. So we have stratified the patient into low risk, high risk. Now what to do next? If at all the patient is belonging to a low risk category, I have to ask him, is it a single episode of hemoptysis or recurrent episodes? Is it single episode or recurrent episode? So if it is a single episode, I generally reassure him and I prescribe antibiotic because usually this single episodes can be due to some upper respiratory tract infection. So in upper respiratory tract infection, just reassure him and give him antibiotic, it will be sufficient. So if it is a recurrent episode, if it is a recurrent episode, you go for CT chest followed by fiber optic bronchoscopy. So Akanksha is asking a question, why rigid bronchoscope in unstable patients? So very simple logic, unstability in massive hemoptysis, see patient might be having big clots within the trachea. So rigid bronchoscope has a big suction channel. So what is the advantage of a big suction channel? You can easily remove the clots and save the life of the patient. See in unstable patients, my first goal is to save the life of the patient, whatever might be the diagnosis. So because there is a big suction channel, you can easily remove the clot and save the life of the patient. Now, if the chest X-ray is abnormal, according to new guidelines, I should go for CT chest followed by fiber optic bronchoscopy. So first thing what you should do whenever you deal with a case of hemoptysis, first know whether it is 
massive or non massive whether it is massive or non massive if it is massive is the patient unstable or stable then chest x ray normal abnormal and next thing if it is normal is the patient belonging to low risk or high risk so dr divya jampani did the algorithm change due to covid say not yet it has not changed anything so saurav kumar rigid is traumatic see it is traumatic when somebody of less caliber or less experience perform if a good experienced interventional pulmonologist perform the trauma is very very less so if at all some inexperienced person if it is your first rigid bronchoscope without any guidance definitely there might be some trauma if you are experienced enough if you are having the training and courage if you do it rigid bronchoscope you can avoid that trauma it is all technique now if you see in this algorithm in majority of cases it is ct chest bronchoscopy ct chest followed by bronchoscopy now in high risk cases also so in high risk cases even a single episode should be evaluated immediately so here also ct chest followed by bronchoscopy so if they tell you there is a 65 year old male patient with hemoptysis chest x ray is normal what should be done next you should go for ct chest so then you can go for bronchoscopy now what is the advantage of doing a ct chest prior to bronchoscopy now if you have noticed here in majority i am doing ct chest first then bronchoscopy see ct chest will help you to tell you the exact anatomical location so you know exactly which segment of the lung is involved now bronchoscopy you know exactly where you want to go you can put the bronchoscope in that segment and take adequate sample if there are some secretions you can take bronchoalveolar lavage and send it for examination if there is some mucosal irregularity or if there is some tumor you can take bronchoscopic biopsy and send it for examination so by these investigations you get a conclusion called diagnosis once you start treating the diagnosis hemoptysis will also resolve so yukti bansal why antibiotics in single episode usually it is due to upper respiratory tract infection so routine antibiotics will be sufficient okay so this is the thing that you should know ct chest will tell you the exact anatomical location of the disease bronchoscopy will steer you into that area and you can take sample from that area if you take secretions it is bronchoalveolar lavage if you take tissue it is bronchoscopic biopsy by this you can get a diagnosis but now if you see here in unstable patient i am not going for ct chest i am directly going for rigid bronchoscopy what is the reason see if i send a ct chest to this patient if i send him to a ct chest room he will never return back he will collapse there itself because he is already unstable patient an unstable patient my first prerequisite is saving the life of the patient so i do a rigid bronchoscopy i stabilize the patient then i can evaluate further so this is the basic algorithm so i'll show you some videos from my practice so this was a patient with hemoptysis i have done a bronchoscopy recently so this is how bronchoscope actually helps me now can you see here i am able to localize the bleed i am able to know the segment and also i can take sample from that area so i'll show you here so can you see this yes can you see this so this is the segmental bronchus so this is completely normal open and there is no blood here so can you see this blood here yes so this is how blood appears through a bronchoscope you can see the blood see i'll just yes yes you can see i'm trying to suck out the blood slowly taking sample from that area so this is how bronchoscopy helps 
So in few patients, even after doing all this, there will be persistent hemoptysis. How to deal? So write down in persistent hemoptysis. So I have two options. So option one is blocking the culprit artery. So option one is blocking the culprit artery. In majority, what is the artery? It is bronchial artery. Yes, Dr. Saurav Kumar. So whenever you are doing a procedure to save a life of a patient, it is called as treatment. So that is for what we are. So doctor is going to save a life of a patient, not by magic, by doing something that is called as treatment. So bronchial artery embolization. So bronchial artery embolization. So in persistent hemoptysis, so one thing what you can do is you can block the culprit artery, bronchial artery embolization. And second thing, if there is a localized disease, for example, patient is having left lower low bronchiectasis already that bronchiectatic lung is destroyed and there are recurrent infections resulting in hemoptysis. So if there is a localized destroyed lung, you can remove that part. So resection of, resection of affected lobe. So in persistent hemoptysis, if there is a localized disease, you can go for resection of affected lobe or you can block the culprit artery that is bronchial artery embolization. Now if they ask you out of these two, which is nowadays most preferred. See whenever you are having a non-surgical method with good efficacy, that will be the preferred method. The resection of affected lobe, you have to give a big incision on the thorax, you have to cut the lung, there are lot of post-operative complications. Bronchial artery embolization, so it is a minimally invasive procedure. So you are going to inject the material through the artery and embolize that artery. So this is most preferred method. So this is a non-surgical method. So that's why it is considered as most preferred method. So in persistent hemoptysis, so we can go for bronchial artery embolization and if they ask you which is preferred, is it bronchial artery embolization or resection of affected lobe? So as of now, most preferred method will be bronchial artery embolization. Now you can get a valid doubt, why not pulmonary artery embolization? So can you routinely do pulmonary artery embolization? Yes or no? Yes or no students, I want you to take part in discussion. Can you routinely do pulmonary artery embolization? Yes or no? So the answer is no, you should not try for pulmonary artery embolization in hemoptysis routinely. So what is the reason? Out of bronchial artery and pulmonary artery, which always takes part in gaseous exchange, your pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery generally takes part in gaseous exchange. Now if you block that pulmonary artery, gaseous exchange will not happen. Patient will develop hypoxemia. So in majority of the cases, we go for bronchial artery embolization only. So very, very rarely when a localized segment of pulmonary artery is involved, only a small segment. So that segment, it can be embolized, but generally it is not preferred. So most preferred method is bronchial artery embolization. So Sartak Mangal, so which glue therapy you are asking? Yes. So there is glue therapy for bronchopleural fistula. So there is uh, glue therapy for uh, uh, sealing the vessels. So Divya Jampani, uh, can you explain the process again? So which process you want? So we are going to occlude the involved artery. So bronchial artery embolization, block the culprit artery, that is bronchial artery embolization. Next is 
resection of affected lobe if there is a localized disease. So this is a brief overview regarding the algorithm of hemoptysis, etiology of hemoptysis and what you are going to do in persistent hemoptysis. So now I want you to know about this uh, DAMS ultimate live course. So the goal of this course is integrated learning. So it is integrated learning and most importantly interactive learning. So Divya Jampani bronchial artery embolization means you are blocking the bronchial artery by injecting the few substances. So there can be some gel foams. So you inject those substance and you block that artery. So that is called as bronchial artery embolization. So this DAMS ultimate live course, the goal is integrated learning and interactive learning. It includes concept books. So you have DAMS question bank. So where there are recent questions and online test series. So where you can see all the recent pattern of questions. So video on demand as backup lectures, not only you are exposed to live learning. So those classes will be recorded and you can also revise them and revisit them later. And apart from this, we have started live doubt solving session. Yes. So live doubt solving sessions. So integrated sessions. So we, this year DVT, we have integrated pathology, microbiology, surgery, medicine, radiology, physiology, anatomy. So integrated learning is the main core concept of this DAMS live based uh, app based courses. So you can subscribe them today. So you can use this uh, referral code and you can avail 10% discount. So you can use this referral code and you can avail 10% discount. So the referral code is BHARMEDMED710. So before concluding, let us see some clinical case. See now you have learned about hemoptysis. Now try to solve this question. So these are all recent exam pattern questions. So there was a 54 year old female with known endobronchial carcinoma on her left main stem bronchus. So the important history in the question already diagnosed a case of lung cancer. She is having disease on the left side. So she is developing massive hemoptysis. So history one liter of hemoptysis and it is bright red and she is hospital. She is already hospitalized. All of the following should be considered in the management except. So now this is a massive hemoptysis. Okay. Now you should consider all of this except. So consider all of this except. Yes. What should be the answer? So you can go for bronchial artery embolization. Yes. Bronchoscopy. Is it helpful? Yes. So bronchoscopy, if there are any clots, it will be helpful. So placing the patient in lateral decubitus position with her left side down. See, is it advised yes or no? The answer is yes. Now, what is the advantage of placing the patient with the diseased side down. See now patient is having left sided disease. So whatever hemoptysis or whatever blood is accumulating, it accumulates on the left side. So now if you make the patient to lie on the side of the disease, so by gravity, all the blood will accumulate here. So this lung, other lung will be free and it will take part in ventilation. So always in hemoptysis, I should protect the, I should protect the healthy lung. So how should I protect the healthy lung? By keeping bleeding lung down. Now in this patient also, if you observe, this is right side, this is left side. So right lung, left lung. So if I put the patient in the left lateral decubitus position, so what happens? All the blood will accumulate on the left side only. 
so the right lung will be free from blood and before you do some procedure this patient life will be saved because right lung is taking part in gaseous exchange so this also can be done so this also can be done see you should not encourage the patient to cough vigorously see whenever patient coughs within the thorax the positive pressure can increase so that can increase the rupture of blood vessels so generally there is when there is hemoptysis we usually prescribe cough suppressants so vigorous coughing maneuvers should not be done so the best answer is option b so the best answer is option b so we have understood this is a case of massive hemoptysis so in massive hemoptysis what are all are helpful bronchoscopy is helpful placing the patient uh, by keeping the bleeding lung down is helpful so if not control bronchial artery embolization is also helpful vigorous coughing maneuvers will only worsen the patient so this is the topic for today students so we have discussed hemoptysis in detail so we have discussed the one liners in hemoptysis etiology of hemoptysis evaluation of hemoptysis algorithm of hemoptysis so all practical approach so whenever you see a case of hemoptysis in your practice keep all these etiologies and keep all these aspects in your mind so by this we will conclude for today so once again who are interested who want more of integrated learning you can go for uh, dams ultimate live course so you can utilize this referral code for getting 10 percent discount so we'll meet you again students so take care and stay safe